uh, Dr. Walker and his team for the invitation. Uh, very excited to be here with a lot of my good friends. And I think my talk really fits in well with Fadi's when we're talking about limb salvage and CLI. And I think some of the cases I'm going to show you you're going to see are really long segment disastrous cases. These are my disclosures. So I, this is a slide I've shown before. I think, you know, with the explosion of diabetes, we've all seen we're not only dealing with bad or big artery disease, we're dealing with SAD, a predominance of below knee and below ankle disease, heavy calcification, not only intimal calcification, but MAC or medial arterial calcification. And we know that this is a strong marker for future cardiovascular events and death. But all these things together are, are leading to really multi-level CTOs and long segment CTOs, as Dr. Mustafa showed during his case. That is becoming the norm rather than the, the exception. So over the years, we've had some really interesting algorithms published in terms of how best to cross a CTO. Dr. Roy and her group on the top left there published their algorithm based on plaque morphology and composition in terms of what type of guide wire I should choose, what type of catheter I should use. Shortly thereafter, uh, Fadi, uh, who's on our panel today, Dr. Saab and his team published, I think, which is probably the most practical algorithm is, is the CTOP classification to really show us what plaque morphology and what cap morphology can do to help us in terms of do we need single access, dual access, should we go retrograde first, and so forth. And then obviously Dr. Banerjee and the PCTO uh, working group with uh, many of the members on this panel came up with their algorithm, again, incorporating a lot of the CTOP data about a year later. The problem with all of these, I think, when you look at them, is that there's really no perfect algorithm for CTO crossing. And I think that's where experience and talking to you know, people that do this all the time really makes a difference. So what do I think are important considerations when we're talking about CTO crossing? I think imaging plays a key role, as I think you saw in a lot of these live cases, right? Cap morphology, what does the cap look like? Proximal, distal, et cetera. Degree and location of calcification, location of important collateral, so that when you do your revascularization, you don't end up knocking this off or, or uh, destroying them uh, during your intervention. I think vessel size makes a difference. If you're coming from a larger vessel trying to get into a smaller one that's one millimeter, that is a very tough recanalization, as we all know. And I think access options, is it single, dual, what sites, arm, above, below, do I go retrograde first, all are important. When it comes to access, if you don't have this in your, in your toolkit, so to speak, I think I would really be, become an expert at anti-grade access, especially if you're going to deal with below knee and below ankle disease, whether it's CFA or proximal SFA. Obviously, think about distal SFA access when you're dealing with, you know, a disease uh, in the proximal and mid SFA that you're unable to cross from above because of calcification or collaterals, et cetera. And don't forget about a modified Schmidt procedure where you can access an occluded stent that's uh, in, a, in, a, in a pop or a distal SFA to try to achieve through and through access. I think another access that's really important, especially in the world of CLI, as many of us see, is that many of these CLI patients have perineal artery access as their single runoff. And so when you're treating these patients, you may need retrograde access. And so really understanding that it's really tough to see the perineal artery with ultrasound, and typically angiography is what you're going to use, and you can do this to access uh, to, to really help you cross a, a heavily calcified or disease CTO. These are two slides from a good friend of ours, Miguel Montero Baker, is a vascular surgeon in Houston. And you can see he sent me these that where he's doing TP trunk as well as the P3 segment of the popliteal artery for access to help him during limb salvage cases, not claudicants, but limb salvage cases. But remember, the compartments get larger as you go up. So if you're not successful, your bleeding rate and complication risk go up uh, significantly. And don't, and don't forget about alternative access sites, right? These all fit into crossing CTOs that are complex. Not only plantar vessels, but also digital artery access. You know, these are becoming very important. I think all of you are familiar with all these catheter guide wire techniques in terms of CTOs. CTO crossing. These are well described in the coronary literature uh, as well as the periphery, and, and, and I'm sure most of you are masters at this. We also have all these CTO crossing systems. The, many of them are, are used and many are not uh, at, at this day and age. They have a cost. They're expensive. They're not always applicable as, depending on the circumstance. And obviously we've got CTO reentry devices 
which we all, you know, have probably used at some point or another. So let's look at some cases. Here's a classic CLI end-stage limb salvage case, right? has a pretty bad area of, of ulceration involving the lower leg, and he's got that green stuff there. This is classic pseudomonas infection, right? That's uh, superimposed on this wound. This is basically a, a last-ditch effort. You can see it's a heavily calcified uh, popliteal artery and below-knee vasculature. It looks very similar to the case that, case that Jihad showed. And you can see we have a proximal cap that's, you know, relatively uh, uh, flush. We've got large collaterals coming. We're dealing with heavy calcification. We're crossing the knee joint. And then we're also having to recanalize into a TP trunk, which is a smaller caliber vessel. So this is all the hallmarks of, like, the worst type of CTO you could cancel. So for this, when I looked at this, I knew that I'm going to have to have dual access. I'm going to have to have access from above. I'm going to have to have access from below. I opted for doing really as much of a recanalization as I could from above, ended up becoming mostly a subintimal recanalization, as you can see here, and then ultimately went from below because I wanted to limit my, sub my subintimal plane and not burn any bridges when I'm trying to re-enter the TP trunk below. And ultimately, I was able to get through and through access. My options are this, though, when I was stuck, right? You got cart, reverse cart, and you've got double balloon techniques that you can use. Obviously, take your pick. I was ultimately able to get intraluminal uh, um, crossing, and, and I didn't want to put a scaffold, as Fadi had raised earlier, because with that much heavy calcification, you're, I, was on, I just could not get good um, uh, balloon inflation and expansion at that time. But you can see we had a nice angiographic wound blush, so a nice CLI endpoint. We have a physiologic improvement when you look at the ABI in this case, and we got clearing of the infection, and, and eventually over six months we're able to get pretty significant wound healing in this patient. Here's another patient, again, advanced limb salvage CLI patient. Unfortunately, this is what most of my practice looks like, it's just like Jihad and Fadi's and Eric and others that are up here. You can see this is another big problem, right? And now look at the angiogram. I have anti-grade access. I've got basically a stump of an AT, stump of a TP trunk. There's really no posterior tibial artery that you can see uh, with the exception of distally around the ankle. This is kind of a classic case that I see on a daily basis. My thought looking at the cap morphology, looking at what I'm dealing with, is that I'm going to have to have dual access, maybe triple access. We're going to have to do some level of pedal loop reconstruction if we don't have a lot of hibernating vessels uh, below the ankle. And so I started from, a, from below. I decided to go after the dorsalis pedis artery. It was hibernating. It was open. I was able to confirm I was intraluminal. You can see my sheath tip on the far right. Ultimately, I was able to reach the top there, and I thought, all right, great, I'm almost done here, almost in. And then I realized I'm completely in two different subintimal planes. So now my question is, what, about, what is my strategy at this point? I mean, what do I do at this point to get in? And in some cases, you can be successful, right? I obviously have strategy one. I can do cart, reverse cart. I can do double balloon. My second, which is what I can show you here, right? I did reverse cart, got through and through access, et cetera, and then continued with the case. My other option is navy bossing, and I'll be honest with you, I learned this from Jihad and Fadi when I visited their center and talked about cases with them years ago, and I think this is probably one of the best techniques that I've ever learned uh, from anyone uh, during my career, and so that's what I did. If you look here, you can see that I'm basically doing navy crossing with a navy cross catheter. I'm trying to disrupt those subintimal planes between the two catheter guide wire systems in order to let me go uh, do through and through access. And, this is a, and then ultimately get through, you reverse your access. I had a lot of hibernating vessels below the ankle, thankfully. Did good vessel prep. Fadi talked about atherectomy. I believe in it as well. I did orbital atherectomy due to the heavy calcification. And then that allows me to do low pressure, prolonged angioplasty in the tibial vessels, reduce my chance for dissection, perforation, rupture, et cetera. And then luckily I was able to achieve a nice two vessel runoff and then ultimately achieve a nice CLI endpoint, which is an angiographic wound blush, as we all know. And you can see there's quite a few hibernating vessels below that ankle. I didn't reconstruct all that. I did a little bit and the rest of it was really good anatomy and, and some good luck. And then you can see over the course of about eight, nine months, we got significant healing in this patient who was really slated for a BKA. So in conclusion, I think complex crossing strategies can be anywhere in between from simple to, to complex. I think you have to think to yourself, a lot of these devices are expensive, and so trying to keep costs low and do things with simple products, simple devices can go a long way. Thank you.